There's a right way and a wrong way of developing algo trading systems. During my time working in the IT industry for over 25 years, there's a significant amount that I've learned about how to ensure a successful IT project and importantly, how to avoid failures. And it's not that surprising that a lot of these lessons transfer straight over to the development of algo systems. Why wouldn't they? So in this episode, I'll be sharing what I consider to be one of the most important lessons that can be adopted into the algo trading system development lifecycle. And if this isn't an approach that you already take, I'm convinced that by adopting this development methodology, you'll see an improvement in the effectiveness of the resulting algo systems that you produce. If as algo traders we're really serious about developing professional trading systems, there's a huge amount that we can learn from the IT industry about how we should be approaching our development process. If we want to become professional traders and earn a living from algo trading, we have to avoid treating the process like it's a hobby and we need to start approaching it like it's a professional business. This episode is going to look at just one aspect of how we can do this. And I can guarantee that if you're not already taking this approach, when you adopt it, you'll never turn back. So this approach I'll be talking about originated in the IT industry itself, regarding the way that application development life cycles are managed. And this is an area that's advanced considerably over the last 10 to 15 years. It had to. There were too many examples of major enterprise software companies releasing product updates with bugs, release dates being missed, not to mention major IT projects failing and in some cases being completely scrapped. The improvements made meant that development cycles got much more reliable and they got quicker. But most importantly, the end product was much more effective at doing its job. So given the end result in a software development context is so much more effective when using this new methodology, you can maybe start to understand why this might be so interesting to us as traders when we develop our algo systems. So let's first take a look at how IT projects have been undertaken historically. This might be similar to how you're developing your algo systems currently. After that, I'll explain how the IT industry tends to develop products now and show how this methodology can transfer over to how we develop our algo systems. So historically, IT projects have tended to use what's called a waterfall approach. This is where all stages of the project happen in a serial manner, one after the other. So in very basic terms, this usually starts off by developing the requirements, followed by a fairly considerable and lengthy development stage to meet those requirements. And then at the end, the finished product is put through the testing phase. And because this is often the first time the users got to see the product, guess what? The application very often doesn't properly meet the requirements. This is because throughout the development stage, there wasn't any point until the very end that there was a working product that could be tested or even seen by users. So let's now transfer over to the whiteboard to see an illustration of this. I think it helps to illustrate the point quite well if we consider the process for a physical product. So let's use the example of building a car. While the product was being developed and built, it was fairly useless at every stage of the process and it remained useless until the very end. And this is a major drawback because if you only find out here that it doesn't properly meet the requirement, then the rework to put things right is a huge issue. Exactly the same applies to building software. So how does this approach relate to algo system development? Well, as we all know, trading systems are made up of many different components. You'll have an entry signal, an exit signal. You might have filters, order and trade management functionality, position sizing rules, stop loss and take profit functionality. Now, if we take this approach to building our algos, what does it mean? 
Well, we'll probably spend a considerable length of time building it and then eventually, once it's complete, at the very end we'll be in a position to backtest it. And based on this initial backtest that we undertake, it will either perform okay or it might not. And if it doesn't quite meet our expectations, how do we know why it isn't meeting them? Could it be the closed signal that's the problem? Or maybe it's the open signal, but it could be the way that the trend filter's operating that isn't so good. Or maybe we need a different kind of stop loss. But the bottom line is that we don't actually know. Another problem with this approach is that it can very often be difficult to work out if the system's even doing what it's supposed to be doing. So is it actually executing the logic how we'd originally intended? You see, when you look at trades that are generated in the backtest in order to validate if the system is working as expected, it's often difficult to see how the large number of rules combine to make a trade open or alternatively difficult to see why a trade didn't open at other times. And so it's the combination of these two separate issues that could lead to a system being considered useless and ultimately being thrown away, just like the major IT project failures that we were talking about earlier. But the fact is that it maybe didn't need to be like that. Maybe the algo system's premise that you devised was actually a good one. And if you'd built the algo system using a different methodology, the result might have been completely different. So in other words, it might have been your approach to developing the system that was the problem, not the system itself. You maybe just threw a perfectly good system in the waste bin. So next we need to look at how the IT industry is doing things today. And hopefully you'll see how this would also be a much better approach for us as algo traders. So click top right now to go to the next part.